Hello and welcome to the Landslide Lab. This lab is composed of a few things and we'll go through them. So first we have some vector math, but it's not quantitative, it's just qualitative. So it's just concepts of vector addition and stuff. So let's go through it. Forces are usually represented by vectors. Graphically, we draw these as arrows. The length of the arrow represents the amount of force, and while the direction of the arrow is the direction of the force. So a gravitational force is represented by an arrow downward. And the larger the arrow, the larger the mass of the object. Small object, small arrow, down because of gravity. Large object, large arrow, heavier, and down because of gravity. So a small mass object has a smaller arrow. In this case, the arrow on the second object is twice as long, showing the object is twice as heavy. Two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction, which means the same length and pointing the same way, regardless of whether they have the same starting points. So here A equals B. Vectors are added graphically by placing the initial point of one vector on the final point of the other. This is sometimes referred to as the tip to tail method. So A plus B, B is originally up here, equals C. So you move B here, so you have tip to tail, and then you draw the C vector, which results from A vector plus b vector, the c vector from the beginning of the a vector to the end of the b. So notice that you would also have move the tail of a to be at the same head of b, still get the same result. So it could be a plus b or b plus a, they both equal c. Note the length of a plus the length of b does not equal the length of c. Obviously, right? Triangle. Vectors are not just lengths, but lengths and directions. All right. Just as you can add vectors, you can divide them into multiple forces. This is called resolving a vector. In the example above, you can divide C into two components, A and B. All right. So C can be divided into A plus B. When dealing with landslides, we are interested in the interplay between two forces. Friction, F, which works against objects moving down slope, and the pull of gravity down slope, GD. To find GD, so the pull of gravity down slope, we must resolve the gravitational force in G, which just pulls things straight down. So we resolve the gravitational force in G into two components, one perpendicular to the slope, which goes right into the slope GP for gravitation, gravitational force perpendicular <laughs> to the slope, and then one down slope GD. So you can see if you move this arrow over here to the tip of this one, GD plus GP adds up to big G. So using those concepts that, um, you get to answer some questions relating to vectors. And then use some vector concepts to answer some questions on whether the slope is stable, unstable, or just about to slide. So go through this. And then um, we relate the, the vectors, the vector length to force. In this case, it's pounds. And culminating questions in this part is um, about how many pounds maximum you can put on a slope of 25 degrees with the friction measured at 60,000 pounds. It'll make more sense after you've gone through the beginning questions, but I suggest you do this little diagram on a separate sheet of paper. And I also suggest that you draw it in pencil. Um, you won't need to turn into the figure, but you will need to turn in the result. 
So what is the maximum weight of a house that can be on this property? So if math scares you, don't worry, it's just drawing arrows. If drawing arrows scares you, just think about it as a math problem. <laughs> so either way, um, this lab should be fairly intuitive. But if not, again, you can always email me and we can work through some of the vector concepts so you can finish the lab successfully. So moving on to part three, we have some resources. We have a landslide hazards and Idaho pamphlet. Looks like this. I'll have the PDF loaded up in the module, but you can also go to the website. And then we have a superficial geologic map of the Lewiston area. And again, I'll, that's the website, but I'll have the, the PDF loaded up in the module. And yeah, it's really small print here, so definitely zoom in so that you can see and read words. Um, and this is a geologic map of just the superficial sediments. So the large landslide complexes near Lewiston were identified through geologic mapping. One such map is what I just showed you, this one. Um, so it's the superficial geologic map of the Lewiston area. The map base is a topographic map. So you've played with topographic maps before in the flood lab as well as in the volcano lab. On top of the topographic maps are different colors that correspond to different geologic units. The map focuses on unconsolidated and semi-consolidated sediments on top of bedrock. The boundary between surficial sediments and bedrock is often a slippage plane that can cause landslides. And as most of the sediments are geologically recent, they're indicated with a Q for quaternary. And then there's just different questions that go through. Um, kind of guiding you through the map to lead you to see where the landslides are and why these landslides might be occurring um, in this particular area. Cool. That gets us to the end of the lab worksheet. You'll submit your answers via the landslide lab quiz and once again, if you have questions, please email me. If you'd like to do more research on the Lewiston area and the landslide hazard, you can definitely um, look into that and see if you want to do your class project on it. Huh? Landslides in the Lewiston area. If that floats your boat, gets you going, please do it for your class project. Uh, um, I think that's it. Good luck, and we'll see you on the flip side.